the internet. Woo-hoo. Yay. All Ooh. right. So the live button has been pushed. Yeah, actually, Dr. Tim, I want to be you when I grow up. If I ever grow <laughs> up. No, seriously. I, I and I told you I was gonna fangirl, but I really I, I respect you a whole lot and what you do and the way you do it. And I think that's, you have one of those unique characteristics that I wish that I had is that you can make somebody feel like the most important person in the room. If there's a thousand people there, but you can make them feel that they're the only one that matters. And that is such a gift that I, as I said, I really wish that I had that of all the things that, that I see around me is I wish that I could make people feel as good about themselves uh, as you do. Uh, so, uh, but welcome to uh, coffee conversations here on, uh, is it Tuesday, John? Yes. Oh, it's Tuesday. Yes, that's right. This is number 40. And today we have, uh, Dr. Tim Lutzenheiser, the chief education development officer and vice president of education for Gon Selmer. We are very blessed to have him with us today. And, uh, very, uh, once again, thank you so much for coming on with us. I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. So. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do with Con Selmer? Well, Con Selmer has a huge division of education. Um, and of course, we, we're doing Con Selmer Institute. We're doing it virtually this year. So that uh, <clears throat> is like putting together a 5,000 piece crossword puzzle without the picture on the box. <laughs> uh, and, you know, Con Selmer, their mission statement is about education and connection. So, you know, that's what we do. We're outreaching all the time. Absolutely. Which is awesome. Yeah, actually, okay. Con Selmer, we were talking to Rick Hamby earlier. Oh, it was that last, last week we talked to Rick. Uh, we had him on with us, and he was telling us about the Con Selmer Institute and the virtual thing. And I think that's going to be a really great opportunity for people. For one thing, they won't have to travel. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, the price is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, the educational opportunities that you get out of that are just amazing. So I know my son's gone to a couple of them and has just come back energized and recharged and all that kind of stuff. Special so group. special group of people for sure. Yeah. So, so Dr. Tim, the, the reason or the focus really, um, this year for CSI is creating a culture of music, correct? And um, I think that the educators that you've gathered around there are just, uh, well, Richard Sosedo often talks about, it teaches you skills. They're off the podium skills. We all get on the podium skills when we go through music education training. But this CSI really focuses on the all those things they don't teach you in college, right? Yeah, that, that's, what, that's why it originally started, Beth, was because w- when we uh, interviewed a bunch of young teachers, why'd you quit? You know, you spent four years learning or five years learning to do this and you lasted two years. What, what's going on? And, um, 80 plus percent of them, it was because of off the podium situations, not musical situations, finance, um, how to deal with parents, scheduling, classroom management, those kind of things. Right. And I, I don't know if this is new this year, but I saw that there's a track, um, not just for first year teachers, experienced teachers, um, but also um, maybe fine arts administrators, I guess you'd call them, or music administrators. Is that new this year? Uh, no, we've had that, uh, Beth. We've probably had that, oh, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years. And it was an accident. We had some, uh, several years ago, we had some administrators come to the, the event. And so then they're out in the hallway talking to each other. And and then we said, you know, would, would you like to have just your own forum? Well, my gosh, you know, everybody was into that. So that's how the Music Administration Collaborative started. Uh, and now they have their own little forum in Pow Wow, and they go over and, and uh, discuss the things that they don't get to discuss with their colleagues very often because they don't have a central location like the rest of us do. Yeah, they're wonderful people. Right. And, I, I you know, one of the things most – most educators don't know about um, the outreach that Con Selmer does as far as for education that they truly do support. And I said last year it was kind of awesome because you had Joe Lamont, the president of the National Association of Music Merchants. And I know after that session, there were so many educators blown away that educators don't know that this industry, we understand and we appreciate that it's a relationship and that if you succeed, we succeed. If we succeed, you succeed. And I thought that was a really powerful connection. Yeah, I think for years, and you probably know this, all of you better than anybody, 
the, the education and um, industry ran parallel. Um, but the symbiotic relationship is if we can integrate it, then we get one plus one equals 17. And, and Joe's been great about that. And certainly Mary Larson and that whole crew of opening it up to say, well, hang on. And, and as you well know, most of the people that are in the music industry were music teachers or players or, you know, it's the music family. We just in different pods right now. Right. right. That's exactly right. <laughs> yep. I was wondering if you had any thoughts that you would be willing to share with us about um, Richard calls it the wild west. Basically, we're in a brave new world. Teachers want to know what they're going to do. Students want to know what their teachers are going to do. But nobody, nobody really knows what's going to happen. And I hate to put it in the con. You could get quagmired in the in the negative of it. Oh, there's a tremendous opportunity that is presenting itself to students and and programs and teachers. Um, any thoughts there? Not a one. No, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, got, I got tons of thoughts about it. And I think, um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm talking to three very successful people here on the screen. Um, successful people don't know how not to be successful. So those who are in this quagmire, uh, you kind of have a choice. Do you want to get caught in the vortex of being sucked into that negative, oh, my gosh, you know, the sky is falling. And the sky is falling, uh, metaphorically. Or you can go, now, hang on a second here. Time is the is the commodity. And what are we going to do at that time? It's just, Richard, like what you were talking about with a couple of people. What are we going to do at that time? The one thing that we can control is the way we approach things, our attitude. The rest of it, you know, we're rolling the dice. Uh, the one thing we know for sure is we don't know anything for sure. So the part we can control is our approach to everything. And, you know, come on. Happy people live in happy worlds. Sad people live in sad worlds. It's the same world. It's the way, it's the way you see things. You know, what is it, that great phrase that says, you don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are. And that filter makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Oh. Reality is perception. Oh. Yeah. Come on. That's the game. That's the game. So there's all kinds of opportunities to do things. And particularly with uh, technology, my gosh, you, they can actually be with their kids more now than they could in a school day. Right. Oh, yeah. And on a one to one or a two to one or whatever. You don't get to do that in school. What an opportunity. Yeah. Mm. You know. Yeah, that, that's what we're finding is these these teachers that are are doing well and excelling and all that kind of stuff are really engaging. Uh, we had a teacher in here earlier that was telling me about the fact that he's doing one on one lessons with people mm -hmm. and covering stuff that he wouldn't have ever been able to cover. Mm -hmm. And the kids are finding music and want him to play these certain tunes and stuff like that. And he's all for it. And so he gets them to just transcribe it and then off they go. So well, it, Richard, even with each other, I mean. <laughs> Come on, the, the music people, we're a cult, real culture. We're a culture, right? Oh, right. <laughs> and I think, uh, not that I get agreement about this, but I think a lot of students are in band, choir, orchestra because of the culture. They're needed, they make a difference, they're important, uh, they have a voice, everybody's a varsity player or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what, that this took away was I can't go hang out in the band room or whatever, but, 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 but we can create it, create it virtually where they can actually spend more time in the band room if they want to quote, quote. Yeah. Right. And I think that's what the good directors are doing. Uh, exactly. They're taking advantage. They're making use of this time. <laughs> I, don't know, I know a lot of teachers, this opportunity, you know, because as, as you said, that, that band choir orchestra experience, these kids, it's not just about music. It's about finding that safe space. And um, they still, like, probably more resilient than their peers simply because they have that space. They have that space that they can still continue to be part of something that's bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. Beth, what's your background? Tell me. Give me some scoop so, Music education. I, I was a music teacher for a couple of years, and now I'm an ed rep for Bright Music Center. 
Okay, and and grew up where and in Akron, Ohio. And went to University of Akron. Nope, went to Mount Union University or oh my gosh at the time. Oh my gosh, the football factory. Uh, oh yeah, Mount Union is famous for weren't they the number one in football for years or years in the division? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they won the most games in a row with 100 and some or 300. I forget what it was. It's yeah. That's where we met was at Mountain Union. So you went to Mountain Union too, Richard, yeah. right? Yep. Oh, I, uh, that's why the purple. Yeah. 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 No, I had to wear a button down <laughs> shirt today because I was having people on. So <laughs> usually I just wear a t shirt, but today it was, I need to wear a button down shirt. Hey, just to remind you if you're watching our stream here and you have any questions for Dr. Tim, please uh, leave a comment for us yeah. and uh, we can answer questions or he can answer questions or something like that. So that's what I got. There's the plug. Um, but one of the other things that, um, one of the other things that um, interests me is that, uh, Dr. Tim, you, function in many different capacities here. I actually went to CSI one year when they ran the band parent or uh, booster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Track. And yeah. one of the stories that you told, um, and I just would, uh, I know that now is a trying time for parents, but um, I personally think that parents just need to keep being parents because as far as music, whether, whether the kids are, you know, in class or have uh, music to play, their role for at least supporting their student in that capacity is, is the same as it's always been to encourage and enjoy not to harass and harangue. Uh, yeah. And that's, and you said it better than I said it before. If it's a safe and challenging and encouraging environment, people are drawn to that. The safe first. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I came out of that era where, uh, the meaner you were, the better the band was, or whatever. And it, it just—it's not going to play out today in in the world in today's world. It's not going to play out. And I'm not sure that you have to do that to gain excellence. That was, a, and like I said, I polished my badge on that before I went. You know, I can't understand. Well, a quick story. Can you handle a quick story? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I was doing a I was doing a workshop, uh, and there was a gentleman in it that clearly was not involved. I mean, he was, he was polite, but he wasn't engaged. So at the break, I pulled him over to the side and I said, you know, what I'm talking about is not resonating with you. Well, he said, I don't motivate kids the way you do. And I said, okay, well, how do you motivate? He said, well, I just kick their rears till they get it right. And I said, what if they don't get it right? He said, I kick harder. Oh, okay. So I said, well, in this last session, what could, what could we talk about that would be applicable to your thing? And I'm not making this up. He said, I have trouble with retention. Whoa. And he never put the two together. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. kids just won't put up with it. No, no. not anymore. They don't no. have to. Create a safe no. space, you know, like all the all the places that like where I've been and have met like different programs and stuff. It's it band it just has to be a place for everybody, and it is, you know. Yeah. What's we got a question here? Yeah, we yeah. do have a question here. So. <laughs> is that Brian? <laughs> it's Brian. That is Brian. Brian, yes. <laughs> Brian was uh, one of the students I got to work with at Duquesne. Oh, you know, teaching. oh great! I love Brian. He oh, knows yeah. I love him too. Uh, a little about CSI Connect. Um, okay, Brian. Uh, it's it's obviously virtual. Um, you'll get online. You'll have a, a menu of classes that you go to. Some suggested tracks, but you can jump around all over the place if you want to. It will be recorded, which means that if you didn't get to go to I don't know Richard Salcedo's workshop because uh, you were going over here to Paula Kreider's that you could go back later and watch his workshop. Wow. So it'll be recorded. So unlike uh, most, um, what, conferences where you kind of pick and choose and then you, that's it. That's what, mm -hmm. you can get the whole enchilada here with recording. So I think that's what gives it kind of an extra spin this time around. That That's actually really awesome. Yeah, I hope that helps, Brian. Hope your family's good too, buddy. I love you, pal. Good boy. Well, and so would that apply? So I know there are different tracks. I'm mm -hmm. very vague here because I know there's a new teacher track. There's mm -hmm. also the experienced music teacher track. And then there's just a music teacher track. So you can follow along 
you don't have to necessarily declare <laughs> what track you're going to follow. No. You just participate in whatever no. trips your trigger. No. And again, there's suggested ones, Beth, but uh, I mean, if you go, uh, that's not, I'm going to jump. I'm going to find out what the administrators are doing now or, you know, so forth. There's talking to the college track. I want to hear what he or she's saying to the college track. So you get a little, you know, shake and bake in it, which is, I think is great to be real honest. And, and, and you can't possibly have gotten a better group of people together. <sighs> I mean, they're all stars. They really are. They're the rock stars of the music education industry. They really are. They're all headliners. Yeah. All, it's a, some some events you go to. Well, I go to them all the time, and so do y'all. That you, you'll have one or two headliners, and then a lot of clinics. Well, all the clinics are headliners here. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an all star team. Yeah. Jen, tell me about you. I want to know about you, Jennifer. Tell me about you. Oh, I'm here. Well, I'm I'm actually relatively. At this point, relatively new to the music industry. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm the general manager for Brighton Music, mm -hmm. and um, I started here about uh, maybe like three years ago. Yeah, three years. Three, wow. yeah. And um, so it's it's been extremely fascinating. Like going to my first NAMM show, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> this is where I want to be. Because um, I originally like started out in education, but then I was like, I don't know really what I'm doing. And then so I moved back here to Beaver County and um, they picked me up, hired me and here we are. So um, really loving it. Um, I work with marching bands a lot um, in our percussion programs. Um, and then I do the, the George Parks Joe Major Academy. Which oh, you were, you got eyes with pride, did you? Oh yeah. I see you a lot during the summer. So <laughs> learn something new every single time. Um, but, but yeah, so that's kind of like, I'm kind of everywhere at once sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, for everybody, anybody that's listening or everybody, you, you just, you know, talking about George Parks, you know, they always say, you'll hear people and Richard, you, you hear this too. Well, yeah, you don't understand. I'm only one person and I can't make a difference. And the thing that does make a difference is one person. Yeah. George Parks is a perfect example. Oh my gosh. Created Ooh. such a legacy and like just oh. continues on through other people and like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, and when they say, and I, I know you're all going through this too, when, you know, when people say, well, everybody's replaceable, it'd be hard to replace George Parks. Yeah. Because yeah. it was, and you know, in our, in our field, the, the organization, the choir, the band, the orchestra, whatever it is, is always a reflection of the person in front of them. You know, where that math class, they're knocking out that curriculum. Bring them in, take them out. Bring them in, take them out. Us, no, 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 no. We mold it and paint it, and it's all different each time. And the music's never the same. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Richard, I want to know about you. I've got I got the, the two ladies. Oh, okay, so um, I was a music education major in college at Mount Union, a voice major, but I also played tuba and trombone. So was fortunate enough to play at the National Cathedral a couple times with Whoa. brass choirs and stuff like that. So then Beth and I decided to get married and I needed a real job. So I took a job <laughs> at Bright Music Center, uh, what, 30 years ago now. And uh, eight years ago, I was afforded the opportunity to purchase uh, the music store with a business uh. partner. So we've we've actually owned the store now for about eight and a half years. Um, and it, it's been a fun ride. Um I, it's one of those things where I've been here 30 years, but when the packages show up, it's still Christmas. Oh God. Yes. So I mean, and that, I, I don't know what other job you can have. That's like that. I mean, we, uh, as I told you earlier, we are very fortunate to be in the position we are, that we have such loyal customers and such great yeah, yeah. people around us um, that are helping us stay afloat. Uh, just the phone calls of people calling in just to see how we are. Yeah. Um, is yeah. fantastic and, and it's it's nice um it's so yeah so that's that's pretty much me so so did you what did you do in the store when you started out when you first started i was i was actually the only salesman so mm -hmm. it was this store was started in 1958 by two music educators um and so they they <coughs> had it for a long time obviously and then they they sold it to uh one of the guy's sons and I actually ended up buying it from him. So, yeah. But so we go back a long way and 
the neat thing is that we've been doing is refocusing where we came from. So we got off track um, trying to be all things to all people. <laughs> and now we are mainly focused on band and orchestra. Um, but we do the other stuff too. But our main focus is band and orchestra and helping the schools. Do you have print? What was that? Do you have music, print? You sell yeah, music? We do have some print, yeah. Okay. We don't carry a whole lot of print, uh, just some of it. Um, mostly, yeah, I mean, we order mostly print. We keep the lesson books for all the schools, obviously, and the, the piano teachers and some folio stuff, but not wide. Um, it's more, yeah. I mean, how long are we mostly online with their sheet music? So that's cool. So we can download that stuff for people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So you think I mean, it's going to go that direction. What was that? You think it's going to go that direction? I, I think eventually all music's going to go <laughs> I mean, doesn't that make sense? I mean, it, re it really does. I mean, yeah. when I, I do, a, um, I run sound for a bunch of musical theater productions. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, do, I'll do eight or 10 shows a year. And, you know, I put my script on an iPad. And if I'm playing the show, I put the music on my iPad. Yeah, yeah. I don't need a stand light. I don't need, you know, I can turn pages easily. I can mark it up and it doesn't mark it up. I mean, yeah. So I think once that technology gets less expensive and yeah. for that size, I mean, the problem is you need the size. Well, I can't see anyways, but, um, but you do need the size to get even for the kids. I think once that gets down there, yeah, I think that that's going to go that way. Yeah. I would suspect. I mean, and, and, and I think things like this, like these meetings that we're having in this kind of stuff that we're doing here, I think this is going to become a norm too, is that we won't see our reps as much. Actually, we'll see them more, but it'll be more like this. Yeah. And so there's actually more connection. We were talking about one of the, some of the manufacturers and Consumer's doing it too. This online stuff that they're doing, we're learning stuff that we didn't know. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And, and because there's not time for our rep to come in and try to sell us stuff and tell us why this is the way this is. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. now we actually get to see the inside workings. And so we're getting more, more vested in the, in the property. I mean, this is the whole thing. I mean, and one of the big things that we love about Con Selmer is they're the last American manufacturer of, of student model instruments. I mean, and that means a lot. So. Yeah. Those so are great. great. Those are great people in the factories. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we, love them. God. Uh, we took a tour, and I said, hey, "Really, I think that opened my eyes to so many things." Can you hear it? And you don't really. But then we saw we happened to be there when the Rougers were coming out of the Rouging room, and these like these big burly guys they wrestle these instruments to, to polish them up, and like you just really don't. I don't, at least I didn't realize how much real work goes into that. That right. might be me being ignorant, but um, really. And I, the, and the fact that, um, I mean, like there's the East Lake plant, there's the one in uh, Elkhart, and now the one in North Carolina that's like the muscle stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Some of those people have been there for almost five decades. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The guy that was there rolling the trombone slides, uh, well, he was in his 60s, and he finally got him an apprentice. <laughs> so that yeah. somebody else could learn how to do it yeah. that it's like i mean that 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 is the or the art that goes mm -hmm. in it you don't appreciate you don't appreciate why an instrument costs what it does until you see what goes into mm -hmm. making the instrument i mean yeah. it, it's it, it gives you a much better understanding of you know it's not like you put a piece of metal on one side and a trumpet comes out the other side <laughs> So, no, and that's what a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. You just put, I'll put the uh, French horn and bang. Right, right. <laughs> there it is. I said, what a box strat has 400 and I think 28 touches, 428 okay. actual touches before that piece of jewelry comes out at the end. Yeah. So, yeah. when parents go, it costs how much? Well, yeah. pretty obvious. Yeah. But just uh, talking about the box strad too, that 50th anniversary one that came out uh, recently, such a good horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a beautiful horn. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we we did really well with those. That new it's a 190 S37. Mm -hmm. Now what the number is on it? Uh, metal valve guides. Um, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Pardon? Hallelujah on the metal. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
and the people that the people that make it literally make it and you know their their heart and soul is there they're artisans they really are it looks yeah. easy <laughs> hey tim come here you want to try this <laughs> like, oh my god i just blew up something here <laughs> I just something what happened no oh, it's not that hard no it is that hard it is that hard Hey, Dr. Tim, we have a question for you. Yeah. Um, and it, it, uh, it, Steve asks, have you considered or are there any plans for a national live webinar aimed at high school band students? I don't know. Okay. I've heard rattles about it, but I don't know. I, <clears throat> what I do know is that some of the states are doing that within their own confinement which means there's going to be a Jill Lamond or somebody like that that goes, wait a minute here. There's no boundaries. Right. You know, we can have kids from Hamburg or Australia or whatever could be in this ensemble. So I think there's people are going to keep going, whoa, whoa, and opening up. No, that's a great question. And there's whoever asked it, man, go do it. Yeah. Be at the front of the pack. There you go. And another question from Andrew Morrison. How do you expect teachers to advocate for their budgets if and when they get diminished due to the pandemic? So, Andrew's a good friend. I, I love Andrew. Say that one more time, Beth. Um, how do you expect teachers to advocate for their budgets if and when they get diminished due to the pandemic? Um, again, I think everybody's going to do it in their own sense. And Andrew comes, I mean, Andrew's blood is uh, advocacy because of his dad. <laughs> He's born with advocacy DNA in him. Um, overall, whether we had this uh, situation or not, I think we will always have to advocate for the arts because people who are making decisions, and Andrew knows this better than anybody, people who are making decisions may not understand. I mean, how do you explain air to a fish? They've been in water their whole life. Right. And so, and again, the Morrison family's infamous for this, to, to take the information, and Andrew's dad did it better than anybody, and to create it so that it's relevant to the decision maker. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I want them there because I want them to experience Lincolnshire Posey. How's that? I want them to taste something artistically that they can't get anywhere else that touches a part of their heart and soul and mind that opens them up to everything else in life. Now, that's Tim's selfish reason. But if, if a, an administrator or a parent said, well, I don't even know what the – what is Tim talking about? That sounds ridiculous. But if you can show them data that is um, advantageous to what they're interested in, now we got game. Now we got game. And again, Andrew, I know Andrew's doing some things on his own that are reaching out to people. Um, we shall survive. Music shall survive in some form. It may be a little bit different, but yeah. Andrew, just keep doing your good work, buddy. You are the man for sure. Yeah. Well, we were sure. talking to Brandon earlier today, that uh, high school band director. He was saying th that he started to integrate smart music into his oh. program and and how great that was that they opened it up pretty much for free, and which is great. But he goes, it's also a great marketing tool, too, because then, of course, you're going to have to buy it. And I said, you know what? This is the time where you can go to your administrator and say, I have to have this yep. because we don't know what's going on. You need to buy this. And that's yep. going to be one of those things that, it should be a no brainer. It should be. Yeah, it should be. Yes, we're buying it. So yeah, it's they, the they best teacher them. in the school and it doesn't miss school. It doesn't have sick days. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Because, you know, but a lot of these teachers didn't have time to to explore it. Right. To know exactly how it worked and all that kind of stuff. Because they're getting concerts ready. They're getting the marching band ready, whatever. Well, now they have time. Right. Now they have time to figure out how this stuff works and and make it work. And the cool thing is that um, we're, that may have been an obstacle for the adults in the situation. The kids are natural at this technology thing. Yeah, they know no limits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
we, we, we unteach them to be creative <laughs> <laughs> along the way. But I mean, you're absolutely right, Richard, that what the, what they, what the directors can do now in the confines of their own home is go, I want to create a, a private lesson program where the older kids are teaching the younger kids, you know, the one room schoolhouse concept. I want to develop a student leadership program so that when we get back, um, I'm not doing, you know, stuff that they can do. They can take ownership of it. And I can for once really define what it's supposed to be that I want them to do. I want, I want to go through some programs, come up with programs for my whole year instead of just grabbing the first thing I can out of the files. It's a phenomenal time for planning. Mm -hmm. You don't get Richard. You're absolutely right. We don't get that. Yeah. We're hanging on for dear life. But that's, the whole thing. You know, that's the same thing where I've been in our business too, is that I, I get so busy wrapped up on the day-to-day -day operation and what's going on that I haven't been able to look at what's really going on inside the business. Yeah. And this pause, uh, which I like to refer to it as, um, has been great for me and um, be able to look at things harder and look at the people that I have and look at what we can do and how people can do things better and where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are. And it's yeah. really given me a chance to to re-energize and to re-go. So, but I think I'm in a very fortunate place. Um, a lot of people think that this, you know, I'm at a level where this thing really isn't worrying me a whole lot. Eventually we'll get through it and we'll be fine. Where some people aren't there and that's fine. There's no, there's no gauge on how you react to this, whether it's, you know, it's okay or whether it, the whole world's falling apart. Wherever you're at, that's fine. But I'm lucky that I feel, at least I feel that I'm lucky that I'm kind of like, okay, we'll get through this. But I get to look at everything harder. I get to spend time with my kids, um, yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah, I get to put a kitchen floor in next week, uh, which <laughs> is not fantastic. But <laughs> writing about a kitchen, yeah, you know, this is the whole thing. I never tried to put a kitchen floor in. Oh, so. never mind. I never mind. Okay, we won't call it whining. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's loud complaining. How about that? Yes, I was going to say grumbled and grouse, but never won. But you, <laughs> Richard, regardless what the situation is, you're you're going to end up at the front of the pack because that's what you do. Well, you, you don't know how not to be successful. You don't have not successful tools because even if you would stub your toe, you would instantly go back and fix it right away. Right? Which we try to do. Yeah. 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 And so to, to you know, we're, we're, we're creatures of habit and your habits are to succeed. So the tools you're working with now, whatever situation they're going to put up, you're going to, you're going to find the right wrench for it. And, and I have the right people around me too. Uh, well, that's I, part of the wrench. Yeah. I, I finally figured out, it took me a while, but it, um, I finally figured out that so things things that you know you don't know. Uh, so what three years ago, my bookkeeper was embezzling. Whoa! So, yeah. Seriously? So, so yes. Yeah, so seriously. So I had to fire her, and uh, obviously, and then um, the um, then during this, so that happened in February. In August, my installer died. So like suddenly. So I had, uh, so I went from just being the owner and the, and the manager, cause I didn't have anybody at that point. <clears throat> so I went from that to being the owner, manager, bookkeeper, then the wow. owner, manager, bookkeeper, installer. So, so that was, and then my mother died in September. So 2016 was completely lost for me. So then, uh, 2017 comes along and I'm looking for somebody to come in and help. And I post uh, something on Facebook and somebody tagged Jen and said, yeah. Hey Jen, you should call him. And I said, have her call me right now. <laughs> I've known her since high school and she did some work for us when she was in college. Perfect. And I said, have her call me right now and uh, we'll get her, we'll get her on board. She can have a job. Cool. So she came in and I'm like, yeah, we're taking you right now. And at that point she was just going to come on as a salesperson, but she excelled to a point where, she was outperforming people that had been here for 10 and 15 years and is so willing to do stuff and is so willing to, to push forward and likes pushing forward. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're going to be the manager was like a year <laughs> and, yeah. and and then just recently we've named her general manager and yeah, it upset a lot of people because they're like, well, I've been here a long time. And I'm like, you don't, you don't have the skill set that this young lady has. 
this young lady has an unbelievable skill set that uh, is wonderful. And the light that she brings to the company, and I'm saying this publicly, and I've said it to her face, uh, the light <laughs> she brings to this company and the positive attitude she brings to this company is is second to none. And uh, so, yeah, so I've surrounded myself. It took me a long time to find people that were smarter than me and better than me um, to be able to let them do what they do. But I am in that situation now where I, I want to find all the people that are smarter than me and better than me and let them do what they do uh, because I can't do it all. And uh, so well, that- and then on the on the on the flip end of that, it's like we're in the place that we are because you do let us do that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. for sure. That's it. You know, <laughs> right. Right. And that's- micromanaging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And and that comes and that's a what a tribute to you, Jen. What a tribute that is to you, because that comes with uh, the foundation of trust. And yeah. if somebody with a positive attitude that you can trust, we can teach them how to do the stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah, I came into this job not even knowing like yeah. how to strum a guitar or like you oh, know. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can, but, I can teach you the skills. Yeah. I can't teach you the heart and soul. And you can't teach somebody to care. I exactly, Richard. That's the whole thing. You can't teach somebody to care. Yeah. And I'm and I'm just fortunate to have, you know, everybody like in the business surrounding me, like all of the salespeople just like, you know, being being able to ask and like answer any of my questions that I ask, like, hey, teach me about this this product. Like, what do you think about this amp? Like, you know, and it's just like everybody's just so open to be able to teach each other those things too. I suspect so, they'll be reflected the other yeah. way as well. That's just an awesome thing. Yeah, right? that, that they trust you and they come to you for what help is, and so forth. Oh, she went away. Great. Where'd she go? She got she got kicked <laughs> off. <laughs> she left us. I was just going to say something else nice. No, she she actually it's she's one of those people that can make the room happy. Oh, you can feel it. Uh huh. Yeah. You can feel it. You feel it across yeah. the screen. Yeah. It's like yeah. So she she's awesome. I don't know where she went, but she uh. Like you probably press a button she didn't mean to press. Yeah, well, you that or the internet went down. Her, 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 battery, died. The magic of the internet, her so. battery died or something. That's the first time we've had somebody get kicked off. Uh, we've been using this program now for, for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, this is a pretty neat program. Yeah, it's it's uh it's yeah. uh, StreamYard. It's um okay. there she okay. is. Sorry, um, <laughs> I don't know. I haven't everything went black. Little duck logo. It's free. So anybody that's it is? Out there wondering how we do this, yeah. So um, they have a little duck logo that goes with StreamYard. Um, if you use just that, um, it's free. Uh, if you want to be able to put your own logo up and do backgrounds and do some other stuff, then it's like 20 bucks a month. Uh, but you can have six guests, up to six guests. Um, yeah, and there's different layouts. You can have you know people lined up you know like that or... Or like that yeah. Uh, yeah so you can move people around you can make people like be the star and stuff like that like oh there's jen oh. And, um, <laughs> how, did, how did you discover it, richard uh actually i follow a gentleman named gary vanderchuk mm-hmm. um who is an entrepreneur uh he he was he's the son of russian immigrants built his father's business from three million to 40 million people 40 million dollars rather in six years oh. um yeah and really is at the forefront of what's going on in media. And I found him, I find him fascinating. Um, if you're offended by swearing, don't watch him because he uses the F word all the time. Yeah. Uh, but he's very truthful. And he also talks about kindness mm-hmm. and, and, and stuff like that. Well, he's, you know, he, his speaking engagement fee is $70,000 for an hour. But right now during this pandemic, he's doing two hours a day for free. And if you have a question for him, he'll, you know, he picks, you know, there's like 6,000 people watching his stream, but he'll pick questions and he'll actually bring you on with him and talk to you like you're at. Yeah. Like, so he's actually giving away his time right now and he uses this. So long story to get to, he, he was using this and I found out what it was and I'm like, oh, well, this is great. So, um, but yeah, he's, he's a very interesting person. And I use a lot of his stuff. Too. What, what's his business besides speaking? Uh, um, actually, <clears throat> he owns now um, the business that his parents were in was wine. So he started a uh, podcast. This is back in the early days of the Internet. Started a podcast called Wine Library. Yeah. yeah. Talk just simply about 
about different wines, right? So now he actually owns Vander Media, which does all the advertising for Nike and Pepsi. And yeah, his goal is to buy the New York Jets. <laughs> so that that's actually his goal. So yeah, so he's yeah, so he's like big time as far as into all the new kitchen floor. So I mean, just for reference. Right. But, you know, I, I, I watch him all the time because he, he does say very interesting thing. His big thing is media, 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 media. If you're not posting all the time on all the platforms, what are you doing? So true. And especially true. right now, I mean, we have the time and that's why we're doing these, these uh, podcasts almost daily at this point or what well, live streams or whatever is just, to, and we're not trying to sell anything. This is the whole thing. It's oh, not yeah. like I'm trying to sell you a guitar or a trumpet or a clarinet. I'm not. My, my big thing is to get information out to people and and to let them know that you know there's people other people out here looking and, and, and helping and and that kind of thing that's my whole game with this um but you you hope that you build the trust with people and then the trust comes back how, how many of these have you done or are doing a day or a week or whatever well, okay so we started out it was just me and jen and uh my son noah we just started out uh, drinking. It's called coffee conversations because we have a local coffee shop and we would go get a different coffee. And then we talk about the coffee, what the coffee tastes like, and then talk about music industry stuff. It's uh, we weren't bringing on guests at that point. We were just it was just the three of us or whoever it was at that point. And um, so we've been doing that for what, like six months? Um, yeah, about that. But at that point, we were like once a week. Wow. So, um, so yeah, it was like once a week. Mm -hmm. And so then, and we actually re record it first and then put it up to our social media. So we weren't going live. So when this whole pandemic thing started, mm -hmm. uh, Jen and I talked about the fact that it'd be nice to do it live. And mm -hmm. just, so if we get a hold of people early enough, we send them coffee or tea. But uh, <laughs> you came on and, and once again, thank you so much. And we will send you coffee or tea. Um, but yeah, so coffee <laughs> shop. And so, so we send them that. And so basically, so it has something for us to talk about before yeah. we get started. Right. I love it. So, um, it. but so then this week, I think we have four, or is it four or three? I think it's um, three. three. Yeah. And then three. plus the live stream on Thursday with you and Tyler. Yeah. yeah. So earlier this morning was Brandon Tamalini. Uh, then of course you, and then Friday we have Corinne Smith from Eastman, um, Eastman Music Company. Yeah. Um, but we have more educators coming on. We're trying to do it two or three times a week. Um, mm -hmm. It's basically whenever we can find people to come on. And yeah. So I'm actually That's sitting great. in my office. I have a green screen behind me. Um, That's what you're, not, you're not in Disney? I wish I was. We were supposed to go at Christmas time, and I don't think we're going to make it. Uh, but that's fine. Once again, safety is is paramount. Yeah. But you know, if we can make it, we're gonna make it. Uh, because it was gonna be the last trip before everybody like went away. Because I've got a well, we've got like a what a junior and a half, Beth. Uh, no, like a senior and a half. Yeah, we have a, a senior and a half in college, and then then we have a uh, uh what he's 19 now, Gabe. Yeah, so he's he's in flight school, but they can't fly. Oh, that's right. Cool. Yeah. And then I've got a senior in high school um, who is sad because she's not going to get to say goodbye oh, to her friends. Yeah. So we have this whole mix of, of things going on. But, yeah. you know, it, it's there's just different challenges for different days. But oh, absolutely. What what can I do to help you? You've what done what you can do, or whatever. I'm telling you, uh, I've, I, as I said, I, I'm blessed that you came and, and were willing to come on with us. Uh, I was kind of joking with Beth because we were looking for certain guests. And I'm like, you know what? See if Dr. Tim will come on. <laughs> yeah. like, okay, I'll send him an email. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And then it was like, hey, I got Dr. I'm like, what? <laughs> fine. This is fine. This is, I would, <clears throat> if I weren't doing this, I would be on one of those Zoom calls talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So no, this is I. I thank you for inviting me. It's an honor and a privilege to do I, this. I, I and literally, if if any of your customers or anybody that you're connected with goes, I wonder if can I? Let's, you know, what is it they say when you? I, I was afraid to ask her out because she might say no. Well, you're already at no. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, the most that they can say is no. And it's like, okay, where, sure. Where you are. Uh -huh. There you are. That's very, very <laughs> So, no, this, I think, I think everybody, it's, it's like you and your whole family here, the people and, and the whole spirit behind you is help. You know, what's that great thing? It says, if it comes between being right and being kind, choose kind. kind. Yeah. Always choose kind. Yeah. You can always go back and be right, but uh -huh. you can't always go back and be kind. Yeah. And I mean, your whole mission is about that. And by the way, you sell instruments too. Yeah. Yeah, we do. But you take care of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's the main thing. And it's that's why they're calling you to see if you're okay and what's going on and how can they help. And yeah, you know, they're not probably calling some other retailers they know, yeah. but you create a family for them, a safe place. I love it. Your Thanks. model. We appreciate that so much. I mean, that means a lot. I mean, that and that has been my whole thing is kindness and to make yeah. sure. Yeah. Amen. So, yep. And that's what I hope comes out of this is more kindness, that people are oh, yeah. nicer and kinder to people and can be more understanding um, if there's any good to come out of this. So, yeah. And it will. People, oh, yeah. people pull them together. Oh, you can see that. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm with you a thousand percent. All right. So we're going to wrap up for today. Uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Tim. Uh, thank you. Thank all of you. I appreciate you so much. Uh, we'll see you on Friday for uh, Coffee Conversation number 41 with Corinne Smith. Thanks. Thank all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> I love it.